Open your Bible this morning to Luke chapter 11, the 11th chapter of Luke. Good to see each of you out today. Thankful you've come, thankful for you visitors that are here. Luke chapter 11. I'm going to read a short passage in the beginning of the chapter. and I've just got a very simple thought in my heart this morning. I'm not going to keep you a long time today. Just a very simple thought. We want to try to get across with the help of the Lord. I trust it can be an encouragement to us. Before we read, let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you know what we need. I'm thankful that you provide what we need. And I know the greatest need that man has is a Savior. And I'm thankful that way back yonder, that a little babe was born in a manger of a virgin, and that he grew up. He fulfilled all the prophecies concerning the Messiah that would come. And then at the appointed time that he went up Calvary's hill, he carried his cross, and then he died for your sins and for the sins of the world and, and for my sins. And Heavenly Father, I'm grateful for that. And I'm thankful that on the third day that he rose again, ultimately proving that he is the Christ. Now, Heavenly Father, we know that the blood of Jesus is sufficient to save the sins of, of all mankind, to save every man, woman, boy, and girl in the world. And yet we know that there's many that don't accept it. There's those that die every day and they lift their eyes in hell, all because of the fact that they fail to receive a free gift that you have offered them. And Heavenly Father, I pray if there's one or more here today that's lost, I pray this could be the time that they could see that all the work has been done, it's all been accomplished, and all that you ask them to do is just simply believe and to trust. And they can be saved, they can get this thing fixed, that they can have peace and never, never again uh, have to deal with the conviction of the Holy Spirit of salvation, never again have to deal with a fear of death or hell. I pray they do that today. And now, Heavenly Father, help those of us that are saved that we could be encouraged and that we could just, uh, just walk in obedience to your word and do the things that please you, that we could have that life of joy that you desire for us to have. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Luke chapter 11. <coughs> There's other places that we could read and uh, look at this prayer, but I'll, I'll, the specific way that a statement's made here in this chapter I uh, feel like the reason I chose to use it uh, this chapter this morning. Verse 1 of Luke chapter 11. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as, also, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto him, or he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that's reading the first four verses there. If you'd like to keep your Bible open, we'll turn to some other places uh, in just a minute. But here, the, the disciples had a desire and their desire was they want to know how to pray. You say, well, preacher, it's not hard to know how to pray. You just talk to God. And that's true. Prayer is us talking to God. And uh, I was talking to a man this week that uh, attends a church or a member of the church where I was in revival several years ago that he was involved in an accident that almost took his life, just a young man. And uh, he made this statement to me. He said, I've never prayed a more sincere prayer in my life than I prayed when I was laying there on the ground bleeding, not knowing if I was going to survive. He said it wasn't a long prayer, but it was a sincere prayer. And I want to remind you this morning that God's not looking for uh, great oratory. He's looking for sincerity, isn't he? He wants us to just come and, and bring our petition before him and uh, just be honest with him and open with him, not to be hypocritical, but to just be very genuine. And so there are some things here that Jesus reminded his disciples to do when they pray. 
And he spoke to them about acknowledging who we're praying to, that we're, not, we're praying to God. He's not just my Father, but He's the Father of all of them that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're to reverence His name. We're to pray for His, for his will to be done, for His things to be accomplished. We're to pray for us, uh, for, to, to, or we're to pray and ask Him to forgive us our sins. He said here that, we're, that we are indebted. Uh, we, we sin against others. And we're to forgive others of their trespasses against us, and we're to ask Him to forgive us of our sins that, that, we, for, that, that we commit. And uh, He said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But there's a statement in verse 3 this morning that I want to try to just bring our attention to, and, and just for a few minutes, try to look at this. He said in verse 3, give us day by day our daily bread. I want us to think about that statement for a few minutes. Give us day by day our daily bread. Now, there's sometimes when I stand up to preach that there's something that's laid upon my heart, and it's very black and white in the Scriptures, and it's something that uh, is good to, good to teach from and, and good to preach from, but I haven't personally experienced it. We, you go through life, you're not going to experience everything, and some things that you're not going to experience until you get older. And yet, that what I'm going to preach to you this morning or try to help us to see this morning is something that I've experienced and undoubtedly probably everybody here that's of age uh, has. I want you to just think about something this morning. I'm going to use an example to try to get us, our minds going a certain way. I want to ask you this. How many of you have got some kind of calendar that you keep? I see a lot of you shaking your head. I've got one. I'm, I, like, I just like to do it on paper. I'm just afraid something's going to happen to my one. I, I don't even have a I've got a calendar on my phone, but I don't even know how to put things in it. And that's okay. You, you might use it on your phone uh, or on paper, whatever the case might be. You may have one in your head. I see some looks. Some of you keep calendars in your head, and that's okay. Uh, wherever you've got it, you've got a calendar. And uh, we set reminders of things. I, uh, my wife, she knows how to put it in her phone. And every now and then, there'll be a noise. I said, what was that? She said, well, it's, an, it's a reminder of uh, something I've got coming up today. Maybe it's a to-do list or this and that and the other. There's some of, you home, some of you that I go into your homes, and on the refrigerator, I've seen calendars. And the calendars, not the type that just hang there, but, the, but dry erase calendars. And uh, you, you, you erase it, you clean it, and every month that you put the things that you have to do for that month. And I don't try to get in your business. It's none of my business what's on your calendar, but there's things I see that are on your calendar. At least that I can see that there's, there's, sometimes there's a lot of things on your calendar is the point I'm trying to make. Sometimes it looks pretty full. And uh, let me ask you this. When you think about that, as we look at our calendars and we look at the things that we have set before us to do, do you ever look at those things and just get overwhelmed? Am I the only one? A lot of times that I'll, I'll look at those things and maybe I'll look out into it in, in advance a few weeks and I'll say, how in the world am I ever going to get all that done? How in the world... Am I going to be able to meet all those obligations? How in the world am I going to be able to fulfill that that, that, that people uh, maybe expect me to do? Let me use an example. And I'm not going to just open my, my calendar and show it to you, but uh, there are certain months of my calendar that are always more bare than others. And being a preacher is just how it goes. No church has a revival in December. Not many of them have them in January. Uh, August, school starts back. It's, it's not, not real busy as far as revivals are concerned. There's a few months that there's not a whole lot going on. But you know what I see when I look at June and July every summer? It's chock-a-block. A lot of times it's one week after another. It's, it's, it's one revival, and, and I don't preach as many revivals as, as a lot of men do, but uh, you may have... In eight weeks of the summer, it may have four or five revivals. Got revival here, got Bible school here, got other things going on, other obligations. And maybe some of those revivals be day and night. And uh, 
none none of you have ever preached so you wouldn't really understand fully what I'm saying. I think you, in a, in a way, in a degree, you could understand it. You think about, and I don't want you to feel sorry for me in no way. I'm just trying to use this for an example because you, you have the same obligations upon you in a different way. But sometimes I look at that. Maybe I'll look at it over the next three weeks and say, I got two revivals, uh, two day and night revivals, and then I got a, a, a night only revival coming up. Well, you, do, you, you just sit down and figure that up. That's like... 33 messages in 22 days. I'm going to tell you something. That's overwhelming. That is overwhelming. You say, preacher, stand up in front of somebody for 30 minutes and talk. You know, how overwhelming could that really be? It's not so much standing up in front and talking. That's 33 times that I must be in the center of the Lord's will and know exactly what he would have for me to preach. Because a man, a, a preacher just doesn't stand up and just, you know, I think I'll preach out of 2 Samuel chapter 12 today. You don't do that. that it, the, it, it comes from a burden that the Lord places upon your heart, and it comes through prayer, and it comes through meditation, and it comes through reading and studying and all of those things. And, and I'll be honest with you this morning, I've not mastered what I'm going to try to preach about today, but the Lord's helped me with this in some ways, that there was a time, and, and I still, there, there's times I still get overwhelmed with it, but Brother Clay, there was a time that I would open that calendar and look at it, and I would begin to just count it up in my mind. And before I knew it, I would be totally overwhelmed. Totally, absolutely. Just how in the world am I going to do this? How in the world are we going to be able to make this happen? How in the world are we going to get through to the other side? But I want you to notice a statement. I want to preach from verse 3. Jesus said, give us day by day our daily bread. Give us day by day our daily bread. Just for a few minutes, I want us to think about thought this morning. and I'm going to take it and try to bear it out with the scriptures about just taking life one day at a time. How many of you just take life one day at a time? He said here that we're to pray for the Lord to give us day by day. That means each day. That doesn't mean that He's going to give us one day the things we need for the next month. But we're to pray for Him to give us day by day. When I wake up today that I'm going to ask him to, 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 to give me what I need today. And I'm not going to worry and fret about tomorrow. I'm not going to worry about the things that are next week or next month. But I'm going to ask him to help me and strengthen me and provide for me today. This day. What is daily bread? We say, preacher, he's just talking about food to eat there. No, go study it. Daily bread speaks of all that we need, all of our needs. The Bible said God's able to supply all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so that it's, it's our basic needs. And I want to remind you of this, that the Scriptures tell us this, that He knows what we need before we even ask Him, doesn't He? He knows what we need. He's aware of what we need. We may not know what we need. We may not know that w- what it's going to take to get through the day or to get through the week or to get through the month, but He does. That He knows exactly what we need before we ask Him. He knows our physical needs, doesn't He? The Lord knows your physical needs. He knows our emotional needs, doesn't He? We have emotional needs. We're emotional people. God made us that way. We have emotional needs. He knows our spiritual needs. So He knows every part of us. He knows all of our needs. He knows everything that, that we are, 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 are in the ways that we're needy, that, that we stand in need of. And not only that, but I want to remind you of this that He also knows the things that we need for the things that we're going to encounter that we don't even know we're going to encounter. You know, I have an, I, I have an idea of what I'm going to encounter this week. But I don't know everything that I'm going to face this week. 
I could try to do everything that I could to provide for those needs that I would have this week, but there's things that come up that come up suddenly and surprisingly and out of the blue, and I'm not going to be prepared for that, but God is. And so he said, give us day by day our daily bread. Preacher, are you preaching against not preparing and not planning this morning? That's not what I'm preaching against at all. The Bible teaches to prepare. The Bible teaches to plan. We have examples of that. It talks about the ant and how that he, he prepares for the future. Uh, just many different ways, many different places in the Bible. Uh, he talks about ways that, that we can prepare for what we have uh, coming up in the future. I want to use an example that I don't know anything about. Some of you do. And if, I, if I'm off in this, you feel free to tell me later. I'll feel free to listen to you. I'll, I'll be glad to listen to you. I've never been diagnosed with cancer. Some of you have. Some of you have been through the treatments. I don't know how I would react to that. In my mind, this is in my mind, this is Brent. In my mind, it seems to me like one of the worst things that you would face when you were diagnosed with cancer is just, that, just the thought of cancer and how overwhelming that is. And I, I may be wrong in that. I hadn't experienced it. But it seems to me when that, when that word is said that, that, that I know that since I've got cancer, there's a process that I'm going to have to go through and it's not pleasant and, 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 and it's not easy and it's not quick it's long, and, and there's a lot of things I'm going to have to face. And I, would, I just think in my mind that if, if, when someone's diagnosed with cancer, that they must be overwhelmed by all those things that they face. I had a man tell me this. I've had several tell me this. It's going through cancer. They said, Preacher, said the only way that you can get through it is to just get through it how? One day at a time. I can't worry about next week. I can't worry about the things that I'm facing down the road. I've got to get through today. And I'm not even going to think about those things. I'm going to think about today, what I need today. And I'm going to get through today, and then we'll face tomorrow, tomorrow. Let me ask you this. Is that how you deal with life? I'm going to face today, today, and tomorrow, I'll worry about tomorrow. Go to the back of the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. This morning, what's helped me more in my life and what the Lord has shown me in those times that, that I look at things and, and I'm overwhelmed because there's so much to be done and, 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 and there's so little time and, and, and it, you, you just wonder, how in the world am I ever going to make it? The best thing the Lord's helped me with is, Brent, don't worry about tomorrow. Let's face today. Let me get you through today. Let's deal with today. Don't, and, and, and tomorrow, we'll deal with what we have to deal with tomorrow. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. You know these verses well. It's good to be reminded of them. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. It's not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, and neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, are not ye much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? What can you accomplish through worry and stress and fretting over life? There's some things that you can accomplish, but they're all negative. Verse 28, why take ye thought for raiment? That's clothes. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And now he's going to apply it. He gets to the wherefore. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not, more not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? 
For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And he sums it up in verse 34. Now there's so much here that I just read through and didn't stop to explain the wonderful teachings here. But he sums it up in verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. What does that mean? Preacher, it means don't worry about tomorrow. You know why we worry about tomorrow? We think too much about tomorrow, don't we? Nothing wrong with thinking and preparing and planning. He said, tomorrow will come tomorrow. We lose a lot of the joy for today because we're worried about tomorrow, don't we? Or we're, we're fretting about what happened yesterday. You can't change yesterday. Tomorrow may never come. The things that you're worried about may never transpire. He says, take no thought for tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow right now. He goes on, he says, therefore take no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. He says, tomorrow there'll be time to think about those things that, that arise tomorrow. He said, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Solomon made a statement in the book of Proverbs chapter 27. He said, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You think about that from that side, that, you know, people that say, here's what we're going to do. But, but he said, we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring forth. So not only do we not need to boast about it, but we really don't need to worry about it either. We'll deal with tomorrow tomorrow. So he said, Take it a day at a time. Worry about today, today. Go back to chapter 16, the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 16. A couple more places, and I'm going to just remind you of some things, and we're going to come to a close. Think about taking life one day at a time. It's God's way. To, God's way is to just take life one day at a time. Again, I'm not talking about planning or preparing. I'm talking about how we deal with the day that's at hand. Exodus chapter 16. I'm just going to go right to verse, verse 4. The children of Israel have taken their journey from Egypt, and they've come out to the wilderness, and they're hungry. And I want you to notice what the Lord tells Moses in verse 4. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every what? Every day. That I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. It shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in. It shall be twice as much as they gather daily. How was manna provided? Daily, wasn't it? Wasn't provided weekly. Wasn't provided monthly. In fact, every night when the sun went down, they didn't have anything to eat for the next day. Didn't have a thing. Besides whatever manna they had, that they had prepared that day, and they had, they had better get rid of it before the next morning. Because it was going to have maggots, wasn't it? Said it bred worm. I guess that's maggots. That's what ours do. You think about that every day, there was nothing. They went to bed with nothing for the next day. But God said, don't worry about it. He said, there's going to be something when you get up in the morning. And every day, when the sun came up the next day, there was new men out there on the ground, except for the Sabbath day. We know that. He said, I'm going to give it to you daily. I believe that's a, a picture, certainly, of the Word of God, and we need the Word of God daily. I, said, I think it's the greatest picture of that. But I believe it's a great picture of the provision of God in our lives. He's going to provide for us daily. He's going to give me what I need today, and He's not going to give me what I need tomorrow today, is He? He doesn't ever give me grace for tomorrow today. He gives me grace for tomorrow, tomorrow. But what do I do a lot of times? I fret and I worry about it. Oh, I wring my hands. Well, what am I going to do? God said, I got grace for that, but I'm going to give it to you tomorrow. 
take it one day at a time. Psalm chapter 68. Psalm chapter 68. Read one verse of scripture here. Psalm chapter 68, verse 19. Psalm chapter 68, verse 19. He said, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. How does he do it? He does it daily. Daily. Not weekly, not monthly, not yearly. But he daily loadeth, loadeth us with benefits. You ever thought about this? God could have, God's the author, he's the creator, he, he does things his way and he doesn't ask our opinion about it. But how did God choose to design time? And the evening and the morning was the first day. Days. Who said a 24-hour day? God did. Man didn't do that. God did. Gave us a 24-hour day. Gave us light. And he gave us darkness. And I'm glad he did because he, he knows our frame and he knew that it, if, if time would have been, you know, what if, what if it was broken up into weeks? And we had to deal with a week at a time. Well, you talk about being overwhelmed. And he made us to where, you know, we didn't need sleep, but, but, but once a week. I'm glad he didn't. He broke it up into days. And he said he daily get loaded, loaded us with benefit. What did he tell us in the book of Lamentations? Let me just flip over there and read it. The book of Lamentations, I believe it's the third chapter. Listen to what he says here uh, concerning his mercies and his compassion. It said, he said in Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 23, They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. God's compassions and his mercies are new every morning. He gives us new grace every day. He said, I want you to take things one day at a time. Just take it one day at a time. The psalmist said, this is the day that the Lord's made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm not going to worry about tomorrow, but I'm going to be glad and rejoice in today. I'm going to do that in today. It's God's will that we just take things one day at a time. And I want to encourage you this morning. I know it's easier said than done. He said, don't worry, don't take thought of tomorrow. Let's enjoy today. And let's enjoy the blessings of God today. And let's be glad in today. And when we get up tomorrow, we're going to ask Him to help us again, and He's going to help us again tomorrow. And let's deal with tomorrow. And then we'll deal with Tuesday. And you know what I help you deal with each day, every night, God turns the lights off, doesn't he? Different times of the year, at different times, he turns the lights off every night. And he said he gives us sleep, doesn't he? It's amazing to me how many people just neglect sleep. I know some people can't sleep. I'm not talking to you this morning. But how many people just neglect to, to take advantage of it? We've got a 24-hour world, don't we? We've got 24-hour media. Everything 24 hours. And yet, that when we do that, we neglect to take advantage of something that God gives us the opportunity to do, and that's rest. And when we fail to get rest, our mental and our emotional state gets unsteady, doesn't it? We're not careful. Take advantage of what God gives you. If you're here this morning, you're lost. The Bible says today's the day of salvation. If today the Lord's dealing with you, today's the day to be saved. And don't put it off till tomorrow. You won't have to worry about it tomorrow.
you'll get it fixed today. Oh, this morning, that we would learn to take things just one day at a time. One day at a time. Let's have a verse of a song. There's something in your heart, you come while we sing.